I'm blinded right now. I can't even, I just see bright balls in front of my eyes. Oh. Hi and welcome back. I have something else to review for you today. I just got that from FedEx today delivery. I bought it from Apple. I know, right? It was the only place where I could get it in Canada shipped to me for free. Um, yeah, in Canada, we're kind of backwards that way. What I bought is a product called Loom Cube Air. It looks like this. What, another cube light? I know, I just, I'm into cube lights now. What can I say? Do you remember I reviewed the U Lensi Cube? It's pretty much similar. This is the knockoff of the Loom Cube. This is the second generation or a smaller loom cube. It's not aluminum, it's a plastic casing. It's targeted for cell phone photography. You can't use it with drones because it has a magnet in it. Don't ask me why you cannot use it with drones when it has a magnet in it. I don't have no drones, but this is what it is. Some people say you can use it for drones. No, magnets, drones don't mix. Apparently they don't. The package that I bought is the Loom Cube Air VC, super snazzy. There's a fabric tag and you open it up and then your stuff comes in it. Super solid. The package alone costs like way too much. And it says it has a Bluetooth pairing possible, which is, yeah, I did that. Totally easy. Download the app. You can then set the light, uh, it's strengths that you want with your phone because it comes with four settings built in that you turn on with this on and off button. Okay, with the phone, you can fine tune it. So you can, I don't know why you would need that, but whatever. It's waterproof. Yes, because <clears throat> you want a waterproof light that you're gonna use with your phone that is not waterproof or with your Osmo Pocket that is not waterproof. Okay, it's waterproof. So it's rechargeable, obviously. Adjustable light levels, yes. Magnetic, yes. And tripod mountable, yes. Now, magnetic, it is. But it's only magnetic on the back. I don't know how useful it is. And, and then the magnet is not like that super strong. I thought it would be a stronger magnet. I don't know. This whole magnet mounting thing, not sure how, how well that works. It has a quarter inch tripod mount on the bottom. This is a handy dandy mini mini micro ball head, okay? So you can install that here with like this and then it's also movable and then you can put it in any kind of cold shoe for example the handy dandy one why do i say handy dandy all the time the one that comes on the osmo pocket extension rod just slide that puppy right in here and then you can lift it up a little higher because you want the light when you film yourself you want the light to be as close to the lens as possible you don't want the light to shine from the bottom up because you're gonna look campfire, okay? So this is how you can install that onto your holder here. Or if you wanna use it with your phone, this particular one comes with a suction mount that you are suction mounting onto your phone and then it sits right at the right angle for you to video chat with people. This little thing can also be mounted on the back of your computer, your laptop, your, your iPad, wherever you want it. And what's nice about this one is also because it is such a flexible mount, you can literally also use this to mount your Osmo Pocket somewhere. Um, because it's a it's a mini suction mount with a, a, a tripod attachment and as you can see here it actually has an action mount too so if you have a, a gopro or whatever you mount that there that also works really well i'm gonna take this screw out 
and put a smaller screw in because that bothers me already. In a previous video, I showed you what kind of screws you can order so these, these things don't stick out as far as this one. This light comes with two silicone squishy diffusers. And I'm telling you, the most important thing from a light source is the diffusion. Because if you don't have a proper diffusion, your video is going to suck. It's not going to look good. You want a pleasing illumination. Like for example, with this ring light, that's why I have a ring light. Because if I film myself with a ring light, I, ha I, I swear I look 20 years younger. If I film myself in regular light, I am wrinkles galore, pores, everything. It's just like, it's no fun. Um, you can probably buy this without any accessories, but I think even when you buy just Loom Cube, it comes at least with these two flexible uh, diffusers. I just saw a video online today that the company that makes the Loom Cube Air has just come out with an adapter that sits on top of the Loom Cube that makes it compatible with all the other accessories that they made for the original Loom Cube, the bigger, the bigger one, the the metal one. They have a snoot, they have barn doors, they have all kinds of colors filters that are all magnetically attached to this front filter holder that they're selling. So this is another reason why if you want a very creative light, the Loom Cube may, may be the way for you to go. Depends on what you want to do, but it opens the possibility of, of a whole array of things um, that you can play with. Let's compare this new light with the lights that I already have. So obviously the most apt comparison would be with the Ulanzi L1 Pro light. Now the L1 Pro is, I believe, stronger than this one, which is not always a good thing because again, you don't want the harsh light in your face when you film yourself. You want you want light that, that can go lower. It's kind of counterintuitive, but the stronger the light outside, the stronger your fill light has to be. And the, the lower the light that you're in the environment, the lower the light has to be shining on your face. And the better diffused it is, the better. The first light I'm testing is the Loom Cube Air with the diffuser that comes when you buy the Loom Cube Air. Um, I felt it was a fair comparison to put the diffuser on because it comes with the product, so you don't have to buy it extra. So this is um, this is light number one, Loom Cube at lowest setting with the white diffuser on. So as I said, one of the biggest, if not the biggest reason for, for me to buy this light, although it's hellishly expensive, is are these two diffusers that come with it. Well, they don't rip, they don't tear. They're waterproof, they're flexible. You can do whatever you want with them. And these just pop on like this. And now you have a nice diffused light. The fact that this bulges out like that has also the added benefit that it sprays the light further and it just, it's a more pleasing look overall. I wanted to try something else. What I did is I turned up the uh, Loom Cube uh, to, towards the ceiling and horizontally, so the, the dome would be, the light in the dome would also shine on me, but mostly would be directed towards the ceiling. I'm gonna do that without diffuser. That's what I'm saying. It is now shining on the ceiling, but very little light comes to me. So this diffuser here, I'm gonna put now on top, and now I have light shining on the ceiling and light shining on my face. I can even rotate it a little bit more if I want to. So this is the highest setting and this is kind of a um, all around light almost. This is if it shines on me directly and this is if it shines on the ceiling and on me at the same time. Highest setting. I just thought that was interesting. This one is smaller it's lighter, it's more powerful, and it's cheaper. It doesn't have Bluetooth connection, it's not magnetic, it does not come with a diffuser, at least not that I could see, and 
it is almost too strong. Okay, this is filmed with the Ulan Z L1 waterproof versatile light or whatever they call it. It's their it's their Loom Cube knockoff. It's um it's very very bright. So this is the lowest setting. The next light I want to compare this to is the Aperture Amaran LM91. This is a very popular light on YouTube. A lot of YouTubers have this light. What I didn't like about it is that it's so bloody big. Yes, okay, it's thinner and it probably is not heavier than this one, but it's big. You have a little tiny, you have a little tiny Osmo pocket and then you have this light next to it. it just looks out of proportion. It's a nice little light, but um, it's just it's just too unwielding for my purposes. So the next light I'm showing you is the Aperture Amaran video light that you can purchase with the diffuser. It's already included in the package, so I, I, I added that too. And this is the lowest setting it'll come with. The last one I have is the smallest one of the bunch. This is the Godox, I don't even know what it's called, EM32. It has 32 little light diodes in there, yeah, LED diodes, and it's marketed as a clip-on light for the iPhone, okay? You turn it on and then you, you, you take a selfie or you're talking to your mom or whatever you want to do. It is not very powerful at all. It will probably work during nighttime, but it's not very strong. So when you're outside, this is not going to be useful as a fill light. It is super handy. It's super small, super light. And although it's as small as it is and it fits really nice in my pack, it's just not strong enough. It's not useful enough for me to carry it around with me. This is the lowest setting in the um, Kodox EM32. Um, I'm going to put this up a little bit higher. That's the light that you get from the highest setting. If you go with the lowest, this is not going to be enough when you're holding your selfie stick away from you. So that's the Godox light. That's the comparison for these four lights. Your light that you can Water purchase when you're holding your selfie with the diffuser. Away. It's already it's included it's in the package, so I, I, that's I the added Godox that too. Why do I need yet another light? The Osmo Pocket opened up possibilities for me to to vlog when I'm on the road and I am going to be on the road this weekend I have to do an eight hour road trip to the center of British Columbia halfway up like after eight hours driving you're still only halfway up the province so we gotta go to a wedding there so I thought I'm gonna vlog eight hours on the road with my husband driving okay not not exactly like that I hope there's gonna be some interesting stuff happening I don't know I'll give it a try. And I know that I'm going to be in situations where I, I don't have enough light to film or I have less than favorable light to film. And my light setup is still something that, that bugged me. I'm not completely happy with my light setup. I will use it at length this weekend. I'm hoping I have some good results for you uh, come next week. Um, until then, I have to say I'm pretty happy with it. I did some video conferencing with my mom earlier and it was great. It is not too painful to look at it, although all these lights in some way or another are very painful to look at. So keep that in mind when you film yourself or when you video chat with somebody. It's a constant glaring into your eyes. So if you're sensitive to these kind of things, be warned. So that's it for today. I'm hoping uh, this was helpful for some of you. I thank you very, very much for watching and I hope I'll see you again in my next video, which will be probably not before next week. So have a good one. Bye.